1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 2! And in this episode of our season with Kyle Larson's number 42, Credit One Bank Chevrolet, we are going to be completing race 23 of 36, which is going to be, once again, at Michigan International Speedway for the Pure Michigan 400. I don't remember what the first Michigan race was called. Probably some kind of store that I never heard of. Where is it? Michigan. Uh, we've already been there. We almost won, so we got, I think, second. Firekeepers Casino 400. That's actually the same name of the race that just happened today as I'm recording this video. Clint Boyer got his second win of the season. He probably didn't deserve it, but that's what you get with rained out races. Same goes for Chris Buescher back in 2016 or whatever. So, yeah, that's something I should mention as I'm recording this video. That race just happened. It got ended early. So, also this weekend we're going to be racing at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Bass Pro Shops um, 500, I guess. There's no race length number in the title, I'm starting to realize. I don't know if it's actually going to say that somewhere else in here, but okay. It's going to be called the Bass Pro Shops MBNA. It's not going to have, I guess they just call it the night race. I'm trying to read the small logos and stuff, but uh, past four races have all been top ten finishes, and our most recent one was our fifth win of the season, so that's great to say. Same time, I didn't deserve any of these top ten finishes, to be honest, because I raced like shit. Now, Michigan... We almost won that race, and I raced the cleanest I possibly could. Now, if I lose in the race car, the tire wear could probably be a little less effective on me, and we could find ourselves finally getting our sixth win of the season and winning at Michigan, which is technically the easiest track in the game. Maybe, maybe not. Well, the easiest track that's not a road course, I should say. Uh, and then you got Mid-Ohio, the hardest, one of the hardest tracks in the game, and it is a road course, so I don't know what I'm trying to say sometimes. But Martin Truex Jr. is back in the points again. He's gotten two DNFs in a row, and then you've got drivers like Jimmy Johnson performing badly after getting up front and whatever. Kyle Busch is in second, still with no wins. Joey Logano in third. And Truex and Logano have both three wins, which means they have two less wins than me, and they're actually the only drivers that can actually compete with me right now in terms of wins, but pretty soon the playoffs are going to begin and it's not going to matter anymore, but I'm getting as many playoff points as possible, which can help me out in the playoffs, to be honest. Uh, the same was said about Truex, that really helped him out in making the Final Four in 2017 season. So, I don't know if that's happening for him right now, but at least he's actually dominating for the most part. He's at the top still. But here's the playoff standings. Of course, I'm at the top, and then you've got the rest of this stuff. Uh, Eric Jones is at the bottom. I could have sworn that A.J. Almendinger was trying to make it in there, but yeah, I guess some of these drivers are starting to get really consistent towards the end of the regular season. So, the reason why we're using the Credit One Bank paint scheme is, of course, because in the first Michigan race, we used the target car, and we couldn't pull it off in that one. So, we're going to use a different car, and we're going to use a different setup, and hopefully that will work. Can't finish well in this game unless you're kissing the game's ass. At least that's how it works with me. So, NASCAR Heat 2 shirt all the way till the end of the championship, even in the final race of the season because I'm going to need that luck. And hopefully by wearing this t-shirt, I'm going to win this race. I don't even know if I was wearing it last time we came to Michigan, but if I wasn't, that's why I didn't win. It couldn't have possibly been the freaking setup or whatever. So, um, I don't think I want to put it in the setup until we go into the actual race. I don't know about qualifying, but to be honest, let's just do it now because it might help us whenever we're going over qualifying just a little bit. Probably isn't that effective because the lap times are way too diverse than much more than they need to be whenever you go into qualifying. So we're going to drop the wedge down to 49%, just 1% down. I think that's all we'll need to really confront the tire wear issue that we had last time. Maybe it wasn't a tire wear issue. Maybe I just genuinely suck. That's also a possibility, JC. Dumbass. So freaking entitled. Okay, um, let's get out of here and qualify. I am somewhat noticing this car's willingness to actually turn a little bit more entering the corners. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe I should loosen it up a little more after the qualifying session. But one thing I want to talk about is the fact that in the truck series, I won both races at this track. The Xfinity series, I almost won that race. I think it was just one race in the Xfinity series at this track. And that was like a photo finish and everything was really close. Rubbing up against them and everything and I just couldn't pull it off. With this one, we were just right behind, I think, Truex who got the win here. And that was probably his third win of the season, the last one that he got. At least I'm just assuming that right now because uh, the last Michigan race was probably like six or seven races ago. So probably be starting like bottom of the top 30 because it's such a fast track yeah 36 on the outside I don't want to be on the outside at all during this race because this is a track we have to obsess over the inside line just to pull anything off Kyle Busch is starting on pull I don't like you Kyle Busch you have no right to perform well whenever you're racing against me I don't know DJ Kennington starting in last place where is kids at seventh Harvick third Truex 17th oh my god and considering Truex he won this race last time, I'm pretty sure. 
I have no idea how on earth he's starting so badly. But he, for all we know, he'd be climbing the field. So, like I said, we're going to go back to the garage. I'm going to turn this down just by 0.5% because I don't want to do anything too much of a deal because you'll find yourself sliding into a corner and getting spun by people rear-ending us, which is something that happened whenever we went to New Hampshire, I think. I think that's what the case was. We actually have to go back to New Hampshire uh, for the first race of the playoffs. That ain't going to be good. So, let's get out of here. Start the race. I like the time of day this race is starting at. I don't recall it starting at this time of day. Last time I came here, I swear it was like later in the afternoon. So this is very strange. I know one thing, like, yeah, uh, okay, I did not mean to do that, Ty Dillon. I know one thing, whenever you do it 100% racing, it'll start this time of day and it'll end in like late in the afternoon. But this seems to be a case where they're doing that for really shorter race lengths. I'm trying to get to the inside as soon as possible without getting put into the outside wall. Cody Ware checks up for me. Cole Witt. Kind of got my front bumper on him. I'm trying to get down to the bottom. I'm trying to right here. I rear ended Ty Dillon because I can't get there. It's just not possible. He is. Oh my god. I can't believe I fit through there. I just can't. I have to be on the inside. You can't do anything unless you're on the inside. So now these guys are pulling away. And I can't believe that's not a caution because we have strict yellows on. That was unfortunate. But, you know, you can't race the outside line in this game without getting yourself killed or someone else killed. So I'm just going to appreciate the fact that it wasn't me. Also, these guys are driving really slowly, and I want to drive fast because um, race car drivers, they drive fast. And these guys drive slow, so I don't think these guys are race car drivers. Th these are back markers. Yeah, that's what their employment title is, back marker. Get out of the way. You hug the bottom. I can't race. This is a very, very disappointing first stage. I'll give you that much. This is very, very... And it's not embarrassing. It's just very disappointing because there, obviously there's nothing I can do about it. It's nothing to do with me. I had to start on the outside and then got stuck up there and I had to avoid a wreck and now everybody's holding the inside line like crazy. Yeah, uh, I don't like how the AI races this track. Chris Busher won't go. Stop it. Oh my god. They obsess over the inside line. They drive so slow on it that I'm forced to just ass ram them and push them all over the damn place because I can't make a pass because of how they hold the line. It's just how the track races in this freaking game. Like I was trying to say, I really don't like how this track races in this game. I think it was fine whenever it first started, but uh, they do this at Richmond, but because it's a short track, I guess it makes a lot more sense, and it's more challenging that way. But golly, this is very shitty, and I hope this is some improvements on NASCAR E3, which is apparently, as this video is being released, getting announced in like, I don't know, 20 days, 19 days? I don't remember how long it is, but they made some announcement on Twitter about the the official reveal of it of some sort. Oh, they got the same text font and everything for the title as they had with NASCAR Heat 2. Uh, I don't know what's going to be new in NASCAR Heat 3 aside from the game engine, but hopefully that game engine can really help out the uh, performance of the AI as well as the graphics. I don't really, the graphics are fine on this game, but uh, physics engine and the way the AI race, that would be really great. Uh, well, we're in 24th, so we really come back from the fact that we had to start on the outside and dodge them wrecks. Joey Logano, someone who's really good at Michigan, um, he's gotten one win here, and he always performs quite well at this track to begin with, so uh, he's always in the middle of the field, so that sucks to see. Now I'm Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson has won at this track three times in a row, and sadly his streak for this track ends this year whenever Clint Boyer wins that rained out race same time, it didn't look like Kyle Larson was capable of winning this race because he, he spun his freaking race car in the second stage and all that. And, uh, other nature was obviously out on his side. This happened to be during pit stops or right after a restart. I, I was kind of amazed by the fact that Clint Boyer was able to pull in front of Kevin Harvick on that final restart of the most recent Michigan race, but that's what happened. Big gap between me and Almendinger that I'm going to clear. Actually, it doesn't matter what I do. We're going to be Finishing 19th in the first stage because I can't make up this much time before we end this lap and it'll all be over. So, this is the whole lead pack or... No, things are really spread out over there. I don't know what's happening between everybody, but they're spread out much differently than you'd expect it to. Came really close to getting into 18th, but that's about it. I was just wondering how I saw Danica up here and then barely any cars in front of her because we were only like halfway through the field. Everybody's going to be taking pit stops after the first stage. Uh, Kyle Busch wins it after starting on pole, so that's not a surprise. Lack of passing at this track, whoever's in first gets the clean air. Uh, two cans of fuel, four tires, and I don't have any damage repair, which is surprising because we were put in a situation where I almost had to uh, repair damage at the very first lap of the race. So, we don't lose positions, 
And that's all because we all went four tires and, well, same strategy of sorts. I don't know if we're going to be picking a second pit stop after stage two and have that be the final pit stop of the race, but I'm just so weirded out by the fact this race is happening so early in the day. I swear the other one happened, like, in the afternoon. I don't know what's the whole morning deal with this. Maybe this is the, the game being smarter than NASCAR itself and knowing that, hey, bad weather's coming, so let's run the race earlier so we can finish before the weather gets here instead of trying to run it um, at the time during the rain and having to postpone the damn thing. I don't know. Yeah, that, that'd be the video game being smarter than NASCAR itself. Uh, you know, you just see the weather coming and try rescheduling it that way. I don't know what the hell Kevin Harvick championship uh, contender and whoever else that was behind him. Looked like a like Casey Kane or something. They just went way up the track and went crashing down to the guys that were on the outside of me. Anyhow, another championship contender, the guy in the lead for the championship, Truex, has moved up into sixth place since the drop of the green flag. Got really tight in turns one and two, but uh, hit Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott won the Pocono race last weekend um, on the channel, so you know, first one of his career happened in my Let's Play. I'm glad to say that. Sucks that didn't actually happen at Talladega with the race that I went to uh, about a month ago as I'm recording this. So, taking the outside of Eric Jones down the front straightaway. Um, well, front stretch, not straightaway, whatever. Also, Eric Jones is in the top five. What the fuck, man? And we got Matt Kenseth, the guy that deserves Eric Jones' ride. He's in it in this game, but sadly, these days, he's not. He's got to drive the six car, and apparently that six car ain't that good. And I don't know if Matt Kenseth is either, or if it's just the equipment, but I swear Matt Kenseth is doing great in that 20 car in 2017 before they kicked him out of it for no reason. Oh, we want a younger driver that's going to be less successful. That's why we had to do it, Chase. Uh, they're, they're, um, they'll get braces and tools for the shit. Okay, Kenza is I don't, trying to side draft me or get a sniff for the freaking two cars in front of me. I don't know, but looks like I have the capabilities of winning the second stage. Just got to get a run on Keselowski and then Kyle Busch, and we've got the time to do it. Not to mention this car is a bit looser than it was last time, so taking the lead should be easier. It's not going to be easy, but it should be easier. I don't know. Plus, the tires obviously aren't that worn right now. So hopefully, they aren't too worn at the end of the race for me to pull off a win or get past the leader if I am not in the lead towards the end of the race. Um, it would really suck at this time Kyle Busch wins the race instead of me, just saying. Uh, we don't need this kind of domination here in front of me. Going to the outside, but yeah, the AI don't block in this game. At least not on purpose, it's not like EA Sports. We need some of the AI back where they'll block you on purpose. Not just that aggression thing you get during career mode where they want to hit you all the freaking time. I mean, like, legitimate... Uh, I'm going to try to keep the lead block, not just, you know, hanging your line because of tires or some shit. But, we're going to pass Kyle Busch going into turn three. I'm losing some grip as we go through the corner, but Matt Kinth is going to get in second place. And now I'm going to see if I can guard the lead. I don't know if I'll overdrive a corner or what, but I might just make a cut to the end. And we got a caution just before I could finish the second stage. But we're in the lead, so... We get 10 stage points, a uh, playoff point, I suppose, and the sad thing about this is, even whenever I'm getting all the freaking stage points and whatnot, Matt Kenseth is still right there behind me in second place, so I'm not making up as many points as I'd like to be. At least, I don't think so, so we'll get two cans of fuel and four tires again, and I'm pretty sure they're going to be doing the same. Let's see. Yep, that same case. Yeah, we're going to be starting the final stage of the race in first place, and let's see if I can keep this lead. I should be able to, because we've got the room to pull away, get that clean air. Ten fucking laps. Oh my goodness. And of course all these AI, they're really fast at the restarts, but I think I've got this. Let's just hope we don't get any freaking cautions that cause some kind of ability for them to fly past me on another restart or whatever. And Kyle Busch is all over my back bumper, and hopefully it shuffles about so that Matt can lose the positions. One thing I did not really look in depth on after the first stage is if whether or not Matt Kenseth finished in the uh, the stage points and whatever to get possible to actually get points with that as well because you can only get 10 stage points for finishing in the top 10 during a stage and uh, I don't know if that happened for Matt Kenseth but finishing ahead of him and all and winning that second stage that can really help us out so it is time to get our sixth win of the season here in Michigan I'll meet you at the white flag and we got another caution just about a lap after I made that cut 
Kyle Busch has been staying there right on my back bumper, so I don't think it's going to be that easy. Also, at the same time, we have eight laps remaining, eight laps on fuel. We probably would have still made it to the end, but this caution is going to help us out and uh, give us you know, a little more space for that. So, yeah, we're not pitting. Obviously, no reason to do that. Looks like Matt Kenseth has fallen back to sixth place, so this is shaping out to be a really good points race for us. I don't think that we're going to get into fifth place finally, but if that somehow happens, that'd be great. Now, got another restart, and with this restart, we've got five laps to go, I think it said. Um, trying to make the calculation in my head by looking at the thing in the top left of the screen. Now Kyle Busch is falling back. If you're on the outside, you're going to lose a lot of positions on this restart. I'm shuffling between apron and the banking, but whatever. Jimmy Johnson all over my back bumper until we finally get a little room going into the corners. It just seems that they all hold that freight train line through the stretches, and... They just stay right there behind you by drafting. And we get another caution. This is probably going to wind up being a green-white checkered. And we're still going to be able to make it on fuel, of course, but come on. I mean, if I come to a restart with tires this worn, it's quite possible that they could take advantage of me. And, oh my goodness, Brian France, David Hoots, I fucking hate you. you you're trying right now. Matt Kinsett has moved into fourth place since the last restart. Uh... I, I can only hope that if we don't win this race, which would be so fucking depressing, it's not Matt Kinsett finishing in front of me. Uh, same time, I don't want to pull a Chase Elliott and finish in second place. I'm Kyle Larson. I deserve to win this race because I'm Kyle Larson. Also, I wish I was racing the Cars 3 car right now, but I'm not. Um, also, I think that Cars 3 car was in the first Michigan race, not the second one. Yeah, because I mean, we just had the Michigan race a while ago. Um, as I'm recording this, and um, that's like a whole season ahead, obviously, but at the same time, it would be happening like on the same date, and that's June, and obviously it's a Disney film, so their sequels come out in the middle of June, apparently. So, got this restart on the apron. I should be on the apron. That's hazardous. Chase Elliott's behind me trying to get his second win of the season, and his second win of his career. One lap to go. Guess I don't need to make a cut. Uh, if I choke, you guys can get to see it right here, right now. I can do this. I can do this. All we gotta do is drive like a normal person. Please, no more caution. And if you throw a caution, end the race under the caution. Don't give us a stupid restart. You don't need that. Oh. Uh, and I swear, if they just started doing that thing where they have a bunch of freaking cautions, then eventually we'd have to take a pit stop to get fuel, and I'd somehow lose a bunch of positions, and I would be screwed out of winning this race. But here we come. Off of turn four. Bit of a gap between me and Chase Elliott. We're gonna get our sixth win of the season. In the Credit One Bank Chevrolet, I think this marks our third win in this car. And we have only two wins in the Target car, which kind of sucks because I like the Target car more. It's a more exotic design with the red and the white. And this is just a bunch of variations of blue. Ah, uh, okay. Finally got what I wanted from the easiest track in the game aside from maybe the tough road courses. Michigan. Yeah, that, that's the call arson we all know. There you have it, our sixth win of the season, and we won the second stage. Uh, Joey Logano finished in 19th. Kyle Busch, who started on pole after winning the first stage, finishes in 9th. Brad Keselowski finishes in 40th place, got a DNF 16 laps down, so I guess that means that he DNF'd in the first stage. At least that's what I can assume. Matt Kids has finished in 13th, so uh, I don't think that's going to be enough to get us into 5th place in the point settings, but it should be a significant gain. Uh, Martrek Jr., our points leader, finishes in 14th. And, as you saw, um, Jimmy Johnson finished up in the top five, I think it just said, so that's probably going to help him out. Actually, no, he finished in sixth, but, you know, Chase Elliott got second place. I'm getting Hendrick drivers confused. Get out of here. They got the post-race information. Kurt Busch, he had the fastest lap today. He was actually the person to set the pole for the, uh, the Michigan race in real life, um, as I'm recording this. We had led the most laps, so we did have quite a bit of domination after starting 36. We came away with the win, so... A lot of cars have passed, but I suppose that could be done on almost any track if you play your cards correctly. And tough break for the guy with the DNF, Brad Kozlowski, started in 5th and finished in 40th. Kyle Busch is back in the points lead again. I think he had it a few races ago, or maybe that was Jimmy Johnson. I don't. I mean, it wasn't Matt Kenseth. I know Joey Logano had it for a little bit, I, I believe. But it's just weird because we have Kyle Busch in the points lead with no wins, Matt Kenseth in front of me in 5th place with no wins, and Denny Hamlin, another Joe Gibbs driver in 7th place with no wins. It just seems that Joe Gibbs drivers can't win races, but they can perform really well and be consistent. And then everybody else in the freaking top 10 has wins. Especially me. Yeah, we got six wins, 
And our main competitors, according to the playoff settings, are Truex and Logano, and they've only got three. So we have twice as many wins as our main competition. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, we got Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth, Denny Hamlin. All the Joe Gibbs drivers don't have wins. This totally contradicts what happened in 2017. I mean, all the Toyota drivers, I think every single driver on that team got a win, right? I, at least I think so. Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and yeah, all, all three of them did, but we ain't got any right now. So, tomorrow, we're going to Bristol Motor Speedway for the Bass Pro Shops NBNA Night Race. They don't have the race length in the name as they do with every other race, so that's kind of dumb. But, I mean, I guess we could already assume it's going to be like a 500 lap race. Well, the re in reality it would be, but it's not 500 miles, that's what I'm trying to say. So that's me race 24 of 36, and we just got our fifth consecutive top 10 and second consecutive win. Oh my goodness. We're not going to win at Bristol. That's impossible. Uh, but yeah, I think we, for the first time in ages, we got a good finish that we actually deserve. Uh, but Bristol, considering how Watkins Glen, Pocono, Indianapolis, and New Hampshire went, if we finish well at Bristol, you know I'm going to do some funky, stupid, disrespectful, and violating shit to my opponents. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.